Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here on this cloudy summer day. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed uh, the rain yesterday. I hope you all got some rain yesterday. I know how rain is here in Lincoln and happening throughout the season. We had a great time at the Pride Parade yesterday, and I'm so thankful to all the people that came to walk with us and came to observe and wave at us as we walked. So it was a very lovely event yesterday, and thankfully because of the cloud cover, it wasn't too hot. So let us go to God and worship together today.
offer our prayers of confession. Merciful God, God, we acknowledge our guilt and seek your face and your forgiveness. For we have not offered steadfast love to you or each other. We have not moved forward in faith, but have allowed ourselves to be stifled by fear. Revive us, raise us up, that we might live before you, rejoicing in the knowledge of your love.
When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch this cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players in the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. About ten years ago, I had a period of time of a few weeks where I couldn't open my jaw all the way. I have TMJ, so I have a history of jaw problems, clicking, popping, things like that. Now, prior to this period of time, nothing had happened that I can recall that caused my jaw to shut. But just one day, I couldn't open my jaw all the way, except for but about a half an inch wide. Now, considering I can open my jaw at two inches wide today, and yes, I did measure for this sermon, <laughs> half an inch is pretty concerning. But I didn't do anything about it. I didn't have any pain, and like I said, there wasn't a clear incident that caused this to happen, so I was fine. I had a hard time eating things like burgers and sandwiches, but other than that, I could function normally. And then one day, just the same as it came, for whatever reason it stopped, and I could open my jaw fully again. Sorry. Thinking back on this period of my life, I'm pretty horrified today that I wasn't more worried about this. So I was in this weird space kind of between wellness and sickness. I wasn't bad enough to need to see a doctor, certainly not at how much healthcare costs were even 10 years ago, let alone today. But I also wasn't in a good spot, and I certainly wasn't at my best. And as I interact with the world and with the people around me, I know that I'm not the only one who finds themselves in situations like this. Not bad enough to see a doctor, but not well enough to be without worth. And when we're in situations like this, how does that compare to the scripture passage today? Jesus says, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but for those who are sick. Well, what if you're not either? What if you're not willing to admit admit that you're sick? What if resources around you make it so that you just can't become well? And of course, all of this talk about physical health It's all really a metaphor for spiritual health and spiritual salvation. And so when we think about it that way, how often do we find ourselves in this kind of 
middle ground space spiritually. This space where things are just fine. There's no reason to call on God because things aren't bad enough to need help. But at the same time, things aren't good enough to be praising God in the streets, to be assured of our place in God's kingdom. I suspect we find ourselves in this middle ground more often than we would like to think. How often do we tell ourselves, oh, this person or that person has it worse? How often do we wish we had it better, but then feel like we don't really deserve it? Or that what we have is good enough? What this often does is it impedes our relationship with God on our end. Because we don't reach out. We tend to disconnect. And it feels like this is just the way it is. But our scripture today gives us examples of how we should behave. Tax collectors and sinners went to Jesus in droves to eat with him. They reached out. They put themselves forward into Jesus' care to receive his spiritual healing. The leader of the synagogue did the same, placing his daughter's life into Jesus' care. But most significantly, I think, is the woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. 12 years. Can you imagine how long she had been living in this middle ground space? She's certainly not well, <coughs> but perhaps she wasn't sick enough to warrant care. We really have no idea of the circumstances behind her situation, so all we can do is speculate. Perhaps she put up with it, because she's a woman, and women bleed all the time. Maybe she did try to get help, and either physicians were unable or unwilling to help her. Either way, for 12 years, she resided in this middle space between wellness and sickness. And yet, what did she do? She reached out. She didn't even talk to Jesus. She simply trusted that touching his cloak would make her well. She reached out in her faith and was indeed made well. So go from here, following in this example of the woman who suffered from hemorrhages for 12 years. Don't sit in this middle ground because it could be worse. Lean on Jesus and lean on God. Reach out and touch them. Lean on your community around you. The world doesn't always have solutions for the things that ail us. But this is all the more reason why we should reach out to God. When things are good, when they're bad, and when they're everywhere in between. Don't let yourself be content with the middle ground. God calls us towards so much more. Reach out, and you will find yourselves wrapped in love. Amen. Our hymn of reflection is number 515, I shall <coughs>
make you God, you meet us where we are and call us forth to follow you. We give you thanks for the beauty of the earth. As summer comes, we thank you for the lengthening of days, the warming of lives, the excitement of children ready for a break. Help us to enjoy your creation, and from that place of joy, to be faithful stewards of the planet that sustains us. We give you thanks for the loving community we find here in Christ Church. Strengthen us, teach us, and empower us to faithful service in the world, so that our love may mirror your love, and your mercy, and our mercy, your mercy. We praise you, O oh God, for your sovereign care for your people. Before you, nations rise, fall, and wither like rocks. Guide the leaders of nations, states, cities, and towns in the ways of your justice, compassion, and mercy. May all who hold positions of authority seek your will, and in doing so, tend to the welfare of all people. We rejoice this morning with those who rejoice, even as we know that the morning does not bring joy for all your people. We pray for people living through war, violence, or oppression. We pray for the hungry and the homeless, the sick, injured, and grieving, those who feel lonely or afraid. We pray for immigrants, refugees, asylum seekers, and all people on the move. As Jesus reached out and touched the people who came to him for healing, may we also reach out. Our hands as your hands, our feet as your feet. Give us the grace to love and serve, to seek and listen, to pray and persist in righteousness and mercy. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are no longer passing the offering plates during the offertory, but plates can be found in the narthex and the plain lot entrance. During the offering, please consider all of the gifts you can give to your age, not just lots of donations. Thank you.
<laughs> things when to when things don't go the way we want them to in worship. Let us pray. Holy God, you grant us the breath of life, filling us deeply with your spirit so that we may know wholeness. Even still, there are times when we feel broken or in pain. Move among us so that we know you in times of brokenness, but also in times of wholeness and all the times in between. Breathe your breath of love over us this day so that the gifts we bring to you may be a holy offering of ourselves to help the world in its brokenness. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Give to this world. 